Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna build the strongest Kenan Bonder Prodigy deck that I can for under $100. Card prices are based off TCG player prices. Cards prices will fluctuate in the future, altering the total cost of this deck, likely causing it to be more than $100. Basic land prices were not included when evaluating the cost of this deck. Welcome to the Degas Dungeon. My name is Jason, and in this video, I'll be making another $100 Commander deck. Blue and green are both great colors in Commander, making Simic a really powerful color combination. And Kinnon, according to EDA Trek, is the most popular Simic Commander, for good reason. Let's check him out. Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy, is a 2-mana two 2-2 two that costs 1 green and 1 blue mana. He has two abilities, and they are both darn good. First one is the spicier of the two. He makes it so that whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, say a creature or mana artifact, it produces one additional mana of any type that it produced. This is just straight up wacky, basically doubling the mana production of all 1 and 2 cost mana dorks and mana rocks. His second ability is an activated ability that costs blue, green, and 5. It digs 5 cards deep into your deck and plays a non-human creature out of them for free. It's pricey at 7 mana and can definitely whiff. But it's actually A-OK -okay, since it turns out that his first ability makes him the easiest commander ever to generate infinite mana with, turning his activated ability into an infinite mana outlet when condition cherry on top. The easiest way to win games with Kinnon is to generate infinite mana, and then dump it into his activated ability to dig at a creature win con from your deck. We have a couple of different ways to get the infinite mana that we'll go over here in a sec, but once you have the infinite colored mana to dump into cannon, you'll be able to dig for a Cogwork Assembler. Once Assembler is in play, pay into its ability infinite times to make infinite token copies with haste to wipe everyone else out. If this doesn't work out for some reason, you can also dig for Gretchen Twitch Willow, our budget-friendly version of Thrasios. Once she's in play, you can dump mana into her ability to draw your entire deck. From there, you can cast something like Blue Sun's Zenith repeatedly on opponents to make them mill out for the win. Okay, so that is what we do with the mana, but how do we get that mana? The easiest way to do this is to have Kinnon and a mana dork that taps for any colored mana in play, such as Elysian Karyated, Incubation Druid, Ornithopter of Paradise, or Paradise Druid. Then play either Freed from the Real or Pemmin's Aura onto that mana producer. Because of Kinnon, it can tap for two mana instead of one. So tap for two blue, use one of that blue on the enchantment to untap the creature. Then tap it for two more blue, use one of it to untap the creature and so on, infinitely. Once you have infinite blue mana, Go ahead and tap for infinite green mana by tapping for green and then using the infinite blue mana produced previously to untap it unlimited times. Another way to generate infinite colored mana is by imprinting Dramatic Reversal onto Isochron Scepter when you cast it. Then you can pay 2 mana to untap all of your mana dorks, mana rocks, and Isochron Scepter. Tap everything down for mana again and then pay another 2 to untap everything. As long as you have 3 mana producers, or 2 mana producers with Kinnon in play, you should gain at least 1 mana for each round of doing so. Do it infinite times for infinite mana. A third way to get infinite mana, only colorless infinite mana however, is comically easy. Just have Kinnon in play, and then cast Basalt Monolith. Thanks to Kinnon's mana ability, it now produces 4 colorless mana when you tap it, but still only costs 3 colorless mana to untap it. So yeah, tap that monolith to infinity and beyond. This won't insta win with Kinnon's activated ability, but it is obviously still just super helpful for casting spells, and can also supercharge any of your spells with X in the casting cost such as dropping an opponent out of the game from nowhere by milling them out with Stroke of Genius or Drown in Dreams, or turning your Genesis Hydra into the biggest boy after it searches through your entire deck to pull out a winning combo piece. 
That infinite colorless mana also turns Thassa's intervention into a dig through your entire deck for a cogwork assembler and win right now kind of card. Or how about Animus Awakening, putting every land from your deck into play, then untapping all 34 of your lands as long as you have two instants or sorceries in your graveyard. So that's how we win, but how do we get there? This deck is full of mana creatures and artifacts to take full advantage of Kennen's mana generating ability. In addition to the ones already mentioned, we're running Elvish Mystic, Findhorn Elves, Llanowar Elves, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Felwar Stone, Everflowing Chalice, Mind Stone, Prismatic Lens, Prophetic Prism, Simic Signet, Talisman of Curiosity, Thought Vessel, Dark Steel Ingot, Replicating Ring, and Midnight Clock. The one drop mana dorks are great for an explosive turn two by playing Kennen with your lands, and then tapping the elf who now taps for two mana to play a mana rock and then tap that mana rock that now taps for two mana to play another mana rock, and so on. Prophetic Prism draws a card when it comes into play, and instead of only filtering mana, Kinnon's ability lets you pay one to tap it and make two mana, like a Signet. Midnight Clock can actually get 12 counters on it pretty quick if the entire pod is still in the game, letting you use it for mana and then sack it later to refresh your hand. With so many mana producers in the deck, it's very easy to explode your entire hand onto the battlefield quickly and then have nothing else to do with your impressive mana pool. That's where the draw comes in. There are a ton of ways to draw cards with this deck, including some pretty mana intensive ones which we're able to use because of our incredibly reliable sources of generating obscene amounts of mana. First off, we have a couple of cantrips with Preordain and Brainstorm. Of One Mind is almost always a one mana draw too since Kennen is human and none of the other creatures in the stack are human. Growth Spiral lets us draw a card and then put an extra land into play. Windfall can help refill our hand for cheap. Bonus if you have Narset Parter of Veils in play to limit your opponents to only drawing one card from it. Factor Fiction and Treasure Cruise are two great draw spells that I run in almost every blue deck I build. Recurring Insight is costly but can fill up your hand and then do it all over again next turn with Rebound. An early game Beast Whisperer or Tatyova Benthic Druid can both be great draw engines on their own. Alongside the draw we also have a variety of tutors to help grab combo pieces directly. Fabricate can grab Isochron Scepter, Basalt Monolith, or Cogwork Assembler. Solve the Equation can grab any instant or sorcery. Muddle the Mixture and Drift of Phantasms can both transmute to search for any 3 cost card in the deck. Trophy Mage can grab Basalt Monolith or Cogwork Assembler, and Tribute Mage can search up Isochron Scepter. For the rest of the deck, we have some more counter spells to protect our stuff and stop opponents from doing scary stuff with Arcane Denial, Counter Spell, Negate, Mystic Confluence, and Sublime Epiphany. Mystic Confluence and Sublime Epiphany both pull double duty here as ways to counter spells and draw us more cards at the same time. They have steep mana costs, but with Kennen, we're pumping out mana like it ain't no thing. We're also running a little bit of removal in case anything too nasty sneaks by our counter spells with Beast Within, Resculpt, Kenris Transformation, Duplicant, and Terastodon. Running out the list are some value creatures with Solemn Simulacrum to grab a land and draw a card when it dies, Progenitor Mimic to copy some threat and then pump out an extra copy every upkeep, and Diluvian Primordial to dump your mana into and play some of your opponent's spells for freezies. The last non-land card in the deck is Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner. She can untap any of your mana producers for some extra ramp, and draws you a card whenever one of your bigger monsters hits the battlefield. Wrapping things up, the land base is simple as can be with 16 forests, 16 islands, command tower, and Yavimaya Coast. And that is a wrap. This deck can be very explosive and win very early, but can also go long game if it needs to with all the draw spells to keep your hand full of gas. So I personally really love playing this deck. I hope you enjoy it too. And let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you next week.